we're looking at the triangle ABC. So here's my triangle A, B, and C. We construct median lines, medians. We construct median lines, B1, well, that's, that's my median lines, and I also construct the, the, the third one. And we have to see that these three lines, they intersect in one single point, and I call this point G here. Of course, because my, this piece of a software, it's a perfect software, it makes the perfect picture, that's why on this picture you got all three intersecting at one point. A priori, like when you first look at this, it's not really clear why it is so, and we will see this, that actually just this little information we have about the vectors, and we don't have much, right? Basically, theoretical background we just discussed today was just this first slide where we did the operations with vectors. That's all we have so far. You, you might have more, but actually I'm telling you that one single slide is enough to establish even this example, which by itself doesn't have anything about vectors, right? Like the statement of the question has nothing to do with vectors, in fact. Right, so like I said, this, this, the fact that my third median, A, A1, goes to the same point is just like a, because my, we have a perfect picture here. In general, we don't know that. In fact, I think, I think that I can uh, ruin this temporarily just to, for the sake of the argument. Let me try to do this if I can. Suppose it happened like this. We will fix it later, but just we will fix it later. So uh, Look how we can see this, this, this fact that actually all of them intersect at the same point. I can even give the name to this point. Let me just give a name of this oh. point. That's nice. So here's my point H. Right, so the proof of this will go like this. First, we give a name, of course, to my vectors, A, B, and A, C. This will be my vector A. This will be my vector B. Here it is. Or maybe I even have it somewhere. I actually had it. It doesn't matter. Uh, what about the vector C, C1? Do you know how to express this vector C, C1 in terms of A and B now? <laughs> but actually, no, no, the other way around, because C, C1, it means that C1 is the end point, so you have to subtract from the, this vector the other one. So it's the other way around. Yes, here it is. One half of A, because the median line, take B. And that comes from this triangle, A, C, C1. What about B, B1? Where's my BB1? Here we go. What about BB1? Any ideas how we can express this one in terms of A and B? Similar trick, half of, half of this vector, I mean half of this long vector, take, subtract, the complete A vector. Here it is. One half B take A. And that will come, that, that came from this triangle, ABB1. Now, what I will do is this, look at this. I don't know what will happen with the BJ, uh, with the vector BG, or with the vector CG, right? We don't know how to express those, because we don't know what's the proportion, how, how, what, in, in which proportion this G point splits the, the complete segment CC1, and we also don't know in which proportion the, the G point splits the vector BB1, but I can name this proportion with the unknowns. So look what I will do. I say that the vector CG, it will be some shrinking of the vector C, C1. What kind of shrinking? We don't know. That's why this scale of factor, I just denoted with the unknown x. Similarly, I can say the same thing about the BG vector. It's some yet unknown shrinking of B, B1 vector. We know for sure it is shrinking. And we know for sure we keep the direction. So we can say something about this x, y, something definitive, like they are between 0 and 1, because it is shrinking, and it is in the, in the same direction. Obviously, these are real numbers. Right. Good. Now look what I will do now. I look at this triangle, B, G, C, B, G, and C. For this triangle, if you use the, the way we add vectors, in a little bit more advanced way, but still it's basically the same way we, like, the way we add vectors, which are, uh, which are like a size of the triangle, we have that the sum of the vector B, G, just follow this, vector B, and ends up in point G, then from the, from the point G to the point C, and then from this point C back to the point G, this is just a zero vector. What we will do now, we will replace every component in this expression for 
a, b, and unknowns x and y. Let's just do that here. Look at this. y times bg vector is the bb1. I mean, y times bb1. So it's this expression. This one stands for the bg vector. Unknown scalar y and the expression we found for bb1. That's the expression. Negative. Negative because here we, I mentioned gc vector and uh, this is a cg in the opposite direction. That's why by scalar, by scaling we have to put extra negative. x times this one. So it's this unknown and cc1 expression. Here it is. And finally, we go down to CB vector, CB. That's again a difference. It's a difference of, difference of A and B. And that's here. And we know this is zero. What I will do now, I will, I will rearrange this. I will combine all of the, because I can open, I mean, I didn't say this for you explicitly, but when we do these operations with vector scaling and uh, uh, summation or subtraction, all of the properties you do, you did with numbers, you can do them equally with vectors. It's something which goes without saying, but actually next time uh, we will go into some theoretical discussion about this. I hope it will be interesting. But for now, we just this goes without saying. We just do this the way we do with, we do with numbers. So I can rearrange these things. I can combine all of the terms which involves only a and all of the terms which involves only b. So if I have my a vector, all components which involves a are negative, uh, well, that's the first a which appears here, right? And this a comes with a negative y coefficient. Uh, next a is this one, it's the second appearance of a, and this a comes with the negative x one half coefficient. And the last appearance of a here with the coefficient one, that's why it's plus one. That's all coefficients of a in the, across the whole left hand side here, and I combine them all together next to one single a. Similarly, I can do for B. Uh, first appearance of B comes here, one half of Y. Second appearance of B is here. Yeah, it's uh, plus X. And the last appearance of B is here. It's negative one. And that is equal zero. Right, so that's what we're looking at. We look at the triangle, BGC, and we come up with this sort of vector equation like this. What do you think will be the next step in our, in our reasoning? Let me just put it this way for you. Imagine, imagine we're looking, in fact, if you look at this whole thing, if you look at the whole thing, if you try to like a, pick up a structure from, from this whole thing, you, you probably tell me that we're looking at something like this. We have a scalar multiple of A vector plus scalar multiple of B vector and this sum is equal to zero, right? And from that, you, ins you just tell me, you, f you tell me that this will be equivalent to both coefficients being zero, right? Why is that? Uh, let me ask you this. Can you give me two vectors for which this is not true? Is there any two vectors for which this is not true? It's a good choice, maybe sometimes something else. Can you just collectively describe all of those pairs of A and B for which this, this is false? Yes, that's 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 the that's the actually this is the perfect and uh, equivalent description of all pairs of vectors A and B for which this is not true. In fact, in fact, in your lecture notes there is a problem about that. Unfortunately, if you look in your lecture notes on page oh page five please. On page five, that's the problem which is marked with four, with number four. For pairs of vectors which are non-parallel, this is this in, this equivalence stands true. For those which are parallel, this equivalence is no longer true. The argument in my handwritten solutions under the mark uh, under the number four, you can check that. Anyway, we know in this example, of course, we know for sure that a vector and b vector they are non-parallel. They are sides of my triangle. If they were parallel, there wouldn't be any triangle at all. So we can do the conclusion which was suggested initially. We can equate both brackets, both brackets individually to zero. So here's my first bracket, this one, equal one. I, I already just, just rearranged a little bit. Here's another bracket, equal one. And we can look at this 
as a system of linear equations with two unknowns. So remember, x, y were just numbers with some specifics, but still just numbers. We can look at this and we can solve for this x and y. Uh, there are lots of ways to solve system of linear equations. Uh, in fact, we will tediously study with you very general way to solve systems of any equations with any or with any amount of unknowns and you will be bored to death by the end of it with this method. Uh, so, for this one, I'll just, just suggest something sort of ad hoc. I just multiply this by negative two, this equation, and add them two together. If I do that, x will be gone, and where y is, there will be negative two y plus one half. Negative two plus one half, it's three quarters, three halves, sorry. Uh, so it, it's something like this. That will, that will, what, that's what will be in the place of y. On the right-hand side, negative 2 plus 1, it's negative 1. That's your negative 1. Now, if you forget about this, and if you multiply this equation with negative 2 and add them together again, on this instance, presence of y will be gone, because he will be negative y, he will be positive y. In the x position, you will have negative 3 halves of x, right? Negative 2 plus 1 half, it's negative 3 on 2. Right hand side will be, will be negative 2 plus 1, it's negative 1. So here's my equivalent system of equations which solves immediately down to. We end up with this. Good. Good. So let's just look at this, summarize what we just achieved. We introduced these two unknowns, which basically the proportions in which this point G splits the complete median line, two median lines the median line BB1 and the median line CC1. And we just found the proportion actually identical, two thirds. So the distance BG twice as long as the, as the distance GB1. And the same story goes here. The distance CG twice as long as the distance CG1. Everybody agrees with that? Good. How does it help us to see that the H point must be here? Look what they can do. We can say like this, yeah, right, we just found this G point, we now know everything about the G point, but now let's just take, forget about all of this. Nothing of this happened, all right? Let's just look at the median lines, B, B1 and A, A1. And let's just do the same thing for them. So we start with the B, B1 vector, we start with the A, A1 vector, we give the expression, there will be something, something, something. If we, what we will end up, with is that the proportion H splits AA1 and the proportion H splits BB1, it will be 2 to 3. Right? If you now forget about the, about the existence of the CC1 median completely, no G, no CC1, just in, in other two medians, imagine point A was here. You can think it this way. If you do the same argument for the other couple of median lines, for the AA1 and BB1, then you will be operating with the H point and the proportion in which this H point will, will split your two median lines, BB1 and AA1, those which intersect at the point H will be two to three, which means that the distance B to H, two thirds of the distance B to B1, but the distance B to G also were two thirds from the first argument now, which we remember. Obviously, if you have two points which split the biggest segment in, in the same proportion, these two points must be identical. That's the reason how you identify G with H. I mean, that's the argument, sorry. That's the argument how you identify G with H. Because you, have to, you don't have to repeat this like a, in writing. You don't have to do it. Just by saying it, repeating the same line of arguments for the other couple of medians, you will find that the H point splits the BB1, BB1 median in proportions two to one. You should say two to one, in fact. Three, two to three is not the right way to say. It. When you talk about points which split a segment, you say proportions of each smaller segment. Two, one. That's why they're identical. Now I can, done. And we no longer need the H point. That's why the medians intersect the same point. 